World War II in Yugoslav Macedonia started with the Axis occupation of Yugoslavia. Macedonian Communist Partisans of the People's Liberation Army of Macedonia, part of the Yugoslav Partisan Movement, started a political and military campaign on of October 1941 to resist the occupation of Vardar Macedonia by Bulgarian, German, Italian, and Albanian forces. Officially, the area was called then Vardar Bonavina, because the very name Macedonia was prohibited in the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. Initially, it had no real success, starting to grow only in 1943 with the capitulation of Italy and the Soviet victories over Nazi Germany. The role of the Bulgarian communists, which avoided organizing mass armed resistance, was also a key factor. Their influence over the Macedonian Party organization remained dominant until the spring of 1943 when Tito's special emissary Svetozar Vukmanovic arrived in Macedonia. This led to the rise of younger generation anti-Bulgarian-oriented partisan leaders, who were loyal to Yugoslavia. In the western part of the area, the Albanian partisans also participated in the resistance movement. After Bulgaria switched sides in the war in September 1944, the Bulgarian 5th Army stationed in Macedonia, moved back to the old borders of Bulgaria. In the early October the newly formed Bulgarian People's Army together with the Red Army re-entered occupied Yugoslavia to blocking the German forces withdrawing from Greece. Vardar Macedonia was liberated in end of November when communist Yugoslavia was established. The operation was called the National Liberation War of Macedonia Macedonian, Narodnuslobodatelna Borba na Macedonia Narodnuslobodatelna Borba na Macedonia by the partisans, in line with the Greater Yugoslav People's Liberation War, but combatants also developed further aspirations over the geographic region of Macedonia. It marked the defeat of Bulgarian nationalism and the victory of Macedonism in the area. Topic. Background The Balkan Wars in 1912 and 1913, and the World War I divided the region of Macedonia amongst the Kingdom of Greece, the Kingdom of Bulgaria and the Kingdom of Serbia. The territory was up until that time part of the Ottoman Empire. In those days, the majority of the Slavic speakers in Ottoman Macedonia considered themselves to be a part of the Bulgarian people. From 1912 until 1915, the territory of Vardar Macedonia remained within the territory of Serbia. In the parts administered by Serbia, the new authorities forced out most of the Bulgarian priests and teachers, and began implementing a forceful state sponsored Serbianization of Slavic speaking Macedonians. It was occupied by Kingdom of Bulgaria during World War I between 1915 and 1918. Afterwards it was restored back to Serbia and consequently included as part of the Vardar Bonavina in the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. During that period, there were two main autonomous agendas. The right-wing Internal Macedonian Revolutionary Organization IMRO, led by Ivan Mihailov, was in favor of the creation of a pro-Bulgarian Macedonian state under German and Italian protection. The leftist IMRO United group, who merged with the communists prior to the beginning of the war, favored creation of an independent Soviet Macedonia within a Balkan federation. This option was supported by Pavel Shatev, Dmitry Vlahov, Matodi Shatarov, Panko Brashnarov, and others. However such Macedonian activists, who came from the Bulgarian Communist Party, never managed to get rid of their pro-Bulgarian bias. During the interwar period in Vardar Macedonia, some young locals repressed by the Serbs, tried to find a separate Macedonian way of national development. Nevertheless, the existence of considerable Macedonian national consciousness prior to the middle of 1940s is disputed. At that time anti-Serbian and pro-Bulgarian feelings among the local population prevailed. <laughs> Occupation of Macedonia Topic. Invasion of Yugoslavia 
Fearing an invasion of the World War II Axis powers, Regent Prince Paul of Yugoslavia signed the Tripartite Pact on 25 March 1941, pledging cooperation with the Axis. On 27 March, the regime of Prince Paul was overthrown by a military coup d'état with British support. The 17-year-old Peter II of Yugoslavia was declared to be of age and placed in power. General Dusan Simovic became his prime minister. The Kingdom of Yugoslavia withdrew its support for the Axis de facto without formally renouncing the pact. On 6 April 1941 the German armed forces Wehrmacht launched the invasion of the Kingdom of Yugoslavia and quickly conquered it. Topic. Division Macedonian region of southern Yugoslavia A division of Vardar Macedonia then part of so-called Vardar Bonavina was drawn up on 19 and 20 April 1941. Bulgarian troops entered the central and eastern parts and seized most of the Bonavina, including parts of eastern Sebia and of today Kosovo. The prominent force which occupied most of the area was the 5th Army. The westernmost parts of Macedonia were occupied by the fascist Kingdom of Italy. Topic. Collaborationist organizations Bulgarian Action Committees, after the defeat of the Yugoslav army, a group of Macedonian Bulgarians headed by Spiro Kitansov arrived in Macedonia and started preparations for the coming of the Bulgarian army and administration in Macedonia. The first of the Bulgarian Action Committees was formed in Skopje on 13 April 1941. Former IMRO members in Vardar Macedonia were active members of this committee. On 13 April 1941, at a meeting in Skopje, it was decided that one of the first tasks of the newly formed organization was to regulate the relations with the German authorities. When the Bulgarian army entered Vardar Macedonia on 19 April 1941, they were greeted by most of the local population as liberators, as anti-Serbian and pro-Bulgarian feelings among the local population prevailed at that time. With the intercession of the committees and Bulgarian administration more than 12,000 Yugoslav Macedonian POWs who had been conscripted into the Yugoslav army were released by German, Italian and Hungarian authorities. With the arrival of the Bulgarian army mass expulsion of Serbian colonists from Vardar Macedonia took place. Once the region and administration became organized, the action committees became marginalized, and were ultimately dissolved. Bali Kombatar in Macedonia, there were 5,500 Bali Kombatar militants in Albanian-occupied Macedonia, 2,000 of which were Titovo-based and 500 of which were based in Dabar, Ivan Mihailov's IMRO in Macedonia. After the military Bulgarian coup d'état of 1934 the new Bulgarian government banned IMRO as a terrorist organization. Ivan Mihailov fled to Italy, where he made contact with the Italian fascist authorities and with members of the German secret service Gestapo. After the defeat of Yugoslavia, Mihailov went to Zagreb and spent the war there with Ante Pavelic. He revitalized parts of his old organization and ordered them to enter Vardar Macedonia and infiltrate the local Bulgarian administration, waiting for an opportunity to take over control and create a pro-German Macedonian state. Although Nazi Germany gave Bulgaria the right to annex the greater part of Vardar Macedonia, the Gestapo had contacts with Mihailov and his men in Bulgaria and Vardar Macedonia. This was in order to have a reserve card in case of things going wrong in Bulgaria. Serbian Chetnik movement in Macedonia, there were approximately 8,000 Serb Chetniks led by Draza Mihailovic operating in Macedonia during the conflict. For a time, they were controlled by rival Chetnik leader Kosta Pekanak. Counter Chetis, the Contraseti were anti-partisan units organized and equipped by the Bulgarian police in the period between 1942 and 1944. 
Composed of former IMRO activists, the first Contrasita was formed in Vélez in the end of 1942 in order to limit partisan and Serbian Chetnik movement activities in the region. The idea for the formation of these units came from Stefan Simeonov, chief of the police in Skopje district, and Vermer internal Dobrujin revolutionary organization Setnik, and was approved by Minister of the Interior Petor Gabrovsky. Their peak strength was 200 units in August 1944. 1941 Topic. Local resistance under question In 1941 the Regional Committee of the Communists in Macedonia was headed by Matodi Shatarov from Prilip. After the Bulgarian takeover of Vardarska Bonavina in April 1941, the Macedonian Communists fell in the sphere of influence of the BCP under Charlo's leadership. When the directive for the organization of an armed resistance movement in all regions of occupied Yugoslavia was issued, Charlo disobeyed the order. Charlo answered the Central Committee CC of the CPY that the situation in Macedonia did not allow an immediate engagement with military action, but rather first propaganda activity should occur, and afterward formation of military units. On the other hand, he refused to define the Bulgarian forces as occupiers contrary to instructions from Belgrade and called for the incorporation of the local Macedonian communist organizations into the Bulgarian Communist Party BCP. The Macedonian Regional Committee refused to remain in contact with CPY and linked up with BCP. Charlo refused to distribute a proclamation of the YCP which called for military action against Bulgarians. At that time, the Comintern had a different agenda for the resolution of the fate of Macedonia, an independent Macedonian state governed by a majority population of ethnic Macedonians. This idea was confirmed by the resolution of the Comintern from 1934, and was supported by the BCP, the Communist Party of Greece CPG, and the CPY. In 1939 the CPY started promoting the idea of formation of a Macedonian state, but within a Yugoslav federation. Shatarov was opposed to the second option and was a partisan of the Comintern agenda, which proposed a creation of a Soviet Macedonia. While the Bulgarian communists avoided organizing mass armed uprising against the Bulgarian authorities, the Yugoslav communists insisted that no liberation could be achieved without an armed revolt. Topic. First attempts Because of this conflict within the RC of CPY in Macedonia, in Vardar Macedonia there was no resistance movement. At the start of World War II, the Comintern supported a policy of non-intervention, arguing that the war was an imperialist war between various national ruling classes. But when the USSR was attacked by Nazi Germany, the Comintern issued a directive ordering the beginning of communist resistance movements in all fascist-occupied territories in Europe, so the RC of CPY for Macedonia began organizing resistance in their area. The RC, headed by Shatarov, immediately ordered the formation of partisan units, the first of which was formed in the Skopje region on the 22nd of August 1941, and attacked Bulgarian guards on 8 September 1941 in Bogomila, near Skopje. At that time, with the help of the Comintern and of Joseph Stalin himself a decision was taken and the Macedonian communists were attached to CPY. Soon after this Shatarov lost his popularity within the CPY and was discredited. People loyal to the CPY were next appointed as leaders of the RC with Lazar Kolosevsky as a secretary. He was sent in September in Skopje. The new leadership began formation of partisan detachments. Armed insurgents from the Prilip Partisan Detachment attacked Axis-occupied zones in the city of Prilip, notably a Bulgarian police station, on the 11th of October 1941. This date is considered to be the symbolic beginning of the Macedonian resistance. 
The prolip detachment was active until December 1941, when it split in three groups, the first in Skopje, the second in Tikves, and the third in Bitola. However, in November the new leader of the RC, Kolosevsky was arrested and sentenced to death by a Bulgarian military court. He wrote two appeals for clemency to Bulgarian Tsar and to Defence Minister, insisting on his Bulgarian origin. As a result his death sentence was commuted to life imprisonment, and Kolosevsky was sent to a prison in Pleven, Bulgaria. Topic. 1942 Topic. Local resistance still under question While the Charlot's leadership was terminated, the vestiges of his policy among part of the local communist activists were preserved. After the arrest of Lazar Kolosevsky in November, the new executive body of the Macedonian Regional Committee continued to share Shatorov's pro-Bulgarian ideas and re-established close contact with the BCP. Bain Andrei Vavelez, a new party secretary for Macedonia, expressed this same ideology. He thought that the Macedonian people believe in Bulgaria's role as liberator and that no Macedonian wants to fight against the Bulgarian soldiers. That the Macedonians should respond positively to the mobilization call being carried out by the Bulgarian authorities and join the Bulgarian army. Tito did not agree with that. During the spring of 1942 Andreev was arrested by Bulgarian police. As a result, a factionalist struggle between the pro-Bulgarian and the pro-Yugoslav lines exacerbated. Thus Kvetko Uzanovsky created a provisional regional committee that tried to take over the pro-Bulgarian faction, but without much success. This policy changed since 1943 with the arrival of the Tito's envoy Montenegrin Serb Svetozar Vukmanovic Tempo. <laughs> Topic. Further development In the beginning of 1942, several new partisan detachments were formed. In May 1942 in the village of Lizik, the Velez partisan detachment Pertashev was formed. It had three successful battles against the Bulgarian police, on Mount Lizik, in Kriva Krusha, and Voinica. In July this detachment merged with the newly formed 2nd Prilip detachment under the name Demeter Vlahov. The detachment had several successful battles on Mount Mukos. In November 1942 in Cerveni Steni near Prilip, the 3rd Prilip detachment Gyors Petrov was formed. On the 22nd of April 1942 in the village of Livchi, near Bitola, the Pelister detachment was formed. It was involved in several battles against the Bulgarians, but in November it was dispersed as the result of a battle against a much stronger Bulgarian army and police force near Orhovo, when two-thirds of its forces were killed. On 6 June 1942 in the village of Slatari on Bigla Mountain, the Bitola Prespa partisan detachment Dame Gruev was formed. This unit engaged in some very successful political agitation and had several military successes, such as an attack on the troops in the village of Smilevo on 2 August 1942, and an attack on the police station in Kazani. In November 1942, the detachment split in three groups, the first remained on Bigla, the second went to northern Prespa, and the third went to southern Prespa. The third group of the Dame Gruev detachment mobilized men from the ethnic Macedonian villages in Mala Prespa and succeeded in liberating territory in Mala Prespa and part of Greek Prespa. This was the first territory liberated by Macedonian partisans during the war. On the 16th of April 1942, the Kreshevo detachment Pitu Guli was formed, which waged several battles against the Bulgarian army and police. The most important of which were the battles in Pribilci, Kosist, and Cer. In September 1942, the second Bitola detachment Jane Sandansky was formed. The fighters of this detachment conducted political speeches in the villages and made sneak attacks on Bulgarian troops such as an attack on the railway station in Baransi in December 1942. 
In October 1942 the Shar Planina Partisan Detachment was formed near Titovo out of Macedonian and Albanian communists. This detachment had success promoting brotherhood and unity among the people in Titovo. In 1942, in the village of Mavrovo, the Mavrovo Partisan Detachment was formed. In 1942 a group of young communists from Shtip assembled on Plakovica mountain in order to form a detachment, but the group was located and destroyed by the Bulgarian police before they could receive their weapons. Groups of communists that were planning to form partisan detachments were arrested due to informants in Strumica and Kokani. The successful actions of the Bulgarian secret police prevented the creation of partisan units in eastern Macedonia in 1942. Partisan activity was coordinated by the headquarters of the National Liberation Partisan Detachments of Macedonia HQ of NLPDM, which was established in July 1942 by Macedonian communists of the CPY and was headed by Mihailo Apostolski. Topic 1943 Topic Support from the CC of the CPY Although several Macedonian partisan detachments were formed through the end of 1942 which fought battles against the Bulgarian, Italian, German and Albanian occupation forces and despite Sofia's ill-managed administration, most Macedonian communists had yet to be lured to Yugoslavia. Between 1941 and 1943, Tito have sent five emissaries to Macedonia, to persuade his ill-disciplined comrades, but their efforts had limited success, and the regional committee was de facto under the control of the BCP. To change that, in the beginning of 1943 the Montenegrin Svetozar Vukmanovic Tempo was sent as an assistant to the HQ of the Macedonian partisan forces. Tempo tried to organize an energetic struggle against the occupying forces. He was supposed to set up a Macedonian Communist Party within the framework of the Yugoslav One. One of his objectives was to destroy the influence of the BCP in Macedonia and to fight against any form of autonomism. He would have to Macedonianize the struggle's form and content, and to give it an ethnic Macedonian facade. One of his main achievements was also that the wartime pro-Bulgarian trend receded into the background of pro-Yugoslav I. Kolosevsky was able to capitalize on the growing contradictions towards Bulgarian authorities, which during 1942 were involved into a policy of centralization, contradicting their initial agenda to respect Macedonian autonomy. Yugoslav communists proclaimed as their aim the issue of unification of the three regions of Macedonia, Yugoslav, Greek and Bulgarian, and so managed to get also Macedonian nationalists. Topic. Formation of the Communist Party of Macedonia CPM. The leadership of the Regional Committee of the CPY for Macedonia decided to establish a separate Macedonian Communist Party which would be representative of the will of the Macedonian people in the anti-fascist struggle for national liberation. The Communist Party of Macedonia CPM was formed on 19 March 1943 in Titovo. The first Central Committee CC of the CPM was composed as of Yugoslav communists as Strahol Gigov, Kuzmin Josifovsky Pitu, Kvetko Uzanovsky, Mara Naseva and Bain Andreev. After making a detailed analysis of the military and political situation in the country, the CC of the CPM decided to be directly involved in the fighting and to be stationed side by side with the troops on the battlefield. The territory of Vardar Macedonia was divided into five operative zones, and efforts were made to make direct contact with the liberation movements in Albania, Bulgaria and Greece. Adding to the existing eleven, eight new Macedonian partisan detachments were formed in the summer of 1943 as more and more people entered the ranks of the partisans. They managed to create strongholds in the regions of Dabarka, Prespa, Kamanovo, Tikvesh, and Gavelia. 
This allowed for the expansion of the National Liberation Committees and the creation of larger military units, as decided at a conference in Prespa on 2 August 1943. Regular large military units battalions and brigades were created as part of the People's Liberation Army of Macedonia MNOV. Preparations began for the formation of the Anti-Fascist Assembly for the People's Liberation of Macedonia ASNOM, which governed Macedonia from August 1944 until the end of World War II. Topic. Formation of the People's Liberation Army of Macedonia Creation of larger Macedonian military units started immediately after the Prespa Conference. The first one to be created was the MERS ACEV Battalion, which was formed on 18 August 1943 on Mount Slave. On 24 September 1943 on Mount Kazif the battalion Strasso Pinzer was formed, on 30 September the Debar Youth Battalion, on of November near Bitola the Stiv Naumov Battalion, and on 1 December the Kamanovo Battalion Orsnikolov, on 8 September Italy capitulated. Italian garrisons disarmed by the MNOV included those in Gostivar, Debar, Kasivo and Lubajno. Some were attacked by units of the MNOV while they were trying to reach the Albanian border and flee Macedonia. The arms and ammunition that were captured gave the opportunity to create new battalions and even brigades. After the disarming of the Italians, a vast territory was liberated which stretched from Gostivar to the north of Struga and Ored. The freed territory included the towns Debar and Kasivo. In the freed territories, a provisional people's authority was established, led by the National Liberation Committees. Meetings were being held everywhere propagating the causes of the national liberation struggle and the right of Macedonians and other nationalities to self determination. The first schools in which the Macedonian language was taught were created in this free territory in 1943. The whole population, both male and female, was included in the struggle, the men were mobilized in militias and were given short military training and the women were organized in the Women's Anti-Fascist Front of Macedonia. In October 1943 the HQ of the People's Liberation Army of Macedonia issued a manifesto to the Macedonian people and all other nationalities in Macedonia as stated in the manifesto, Aromanians, Albanians and Turks to join the fight of the Macedonian National Liberation Army to win freedom and create a free socialist republic of Macedonia. The manifesto also called for struggle against the reactionary Serbian, Albanian and Bulgarian elements Chetniks, Bali Kombatar and IMRO agents. During the summer of 1943, meetings were held between representatives of the National Liberation Front Greece and the Albanian resistance. Svetozar Vukmanovic Tempo put forward the idea of a joint Balkan headquarters to exercise supreme control over the partisan movements in Yugoslavia, Albania, Bulgaria, and Greece. Tempo asked for recognition of the ethnic Macedonian people's right to self-determination, as well as permission for the partisans from Vardar Macedonia to extend their activity among the Slavic-speaking population in Greek Macedonia. As a result, the Slavic Macedonian National Liberation Front SNOF was established in 1943 in Greek Macedonia by ethnic Macedonian communists, members of the Communist Party of Greece KKE. On the 11th of November 1943 in the village of Slivovo the 1st Macedonian Kosovo Brigade was formed out of three Macedonian battalions and one battalion from fascist Italian-occupied Kosovo. Regions controlled by the partisans now included Debarka, Mavrovo, and Rastusa, within Italy's occupied territory. Immediately after the establishment of the Free Territory in western Vardar Macedonia, the German command made an incursion into the areas held by the Provisional Authority. The problem for the Germans was the fact that the Free Territory was cutting off communications between Skopje and northeastern Greece. After assembling two divisions and artillery units, the Macedonian forces started operations to recapture the territory. 
The struggle lasted more than two months, with the most important battles being at Bukovich, Debarka, Kasivo and Slivovo. The town of Kasivo was recaptured by the Germans in the beginning of November, but three days later it once again fell to Macedonian partisan hands, to be later recaptured for the second time by the German troops. The High Command of the People's Liberation Army of Macedonia together with the Central Committee of the Communist Party of Macedonia decided to take evasive maneuvers in order to avoid total destruction of the Macedonian forces because of the overwhelming number of enemy troops engaged. Only few small units were left behind. After more than two months of constant battles, in December 1943 the Macedonian MNOV together with the CC of the CPM started a massive retreat through Prespa and after a 13-day march entered Greek Macedonia. <laughs> Bulgarian actions in 1943 Bulgaria managed to save its entire 48,000-strong Jewish population during World War II from deportation to Nazi concentration camps, but under German pressure those Jews from their newly annexed territories without Bulgarian citizenship were deported, such as those from Vardar Macedonia and Western Thrace. The Bulgarian government was responsible for the roundup and deportation of over 7,000 Jews in Skopje and Bitola. The Bulgarian authorities created a special gendarmerie force which received almost unlimited power to pursue the communist partisans in the whole kingdom. The gendarmes became notorious for carrying out atrocities against captured partisans and their supporters. Harsh rule by the occupying forces and a number of Allied victories showing that the Axis might lose the war encouraged more Macedonians to support the communist partisan resistance movement of Josip Broz Tito. Many former IMRO members assisted the Bulgarian authorities in fighting Tempo's partisans. With the help of the Bulgarian government and former IMRO members, several pro-Bulgarian paramilitary detachments Urana were organized in occupied Greek Macedonia in 1943. These were led by Bulgarian officers originally from Greek Macedonia and charged with protecting the local population in the zones under German and Italian control. Around this time Ivan Mihailov of IMRO had plans which envisaged the creation of a Macedonian state under German control. He was a follower of the idea of a united Macedonian state with a dominant Bulgarian element. It was anticipated by the Germans that members of IMRO would form the core of the armed forces of a future independent Macedonia led by Ivan Mihailov. Topic. 1944 and aftermath Topic. February campaign After passing through the whole of Western Greek Macedonia, the main forces of the People's Liberation Army of Macedonia were stationed in the Almopia region in Greece close to the Yugoslav border. The partisan detachments that were active in Gevgelia and Tikvesh also crossed the border into northern Greece and met with the main forces of the MNOV. Several meetings were held with members of ELAS and the Greek Communist Party. One of the decisions was the creation of wider partisan detachments composed of the ethnic Macedonian minority in Greece. On 20 December 1943 in the village of Fustani in the Pella district of Greece, the 2nd Macedonian Assault Brigade was formed out of the three battalions of the 3rd Operative Zone. The Bulgarian Risto Botev Partisan Battalion of the MNOV was formed out of captured and escaped Bulgarian soldiers. It was under the command of the HQ of MNOV. The rest of the fighters that were not included in the 1st Macedonian Kosovo Assault Brigade and the 2nd Macedonian Assault Brigade the Risto Botev and Stiv Naumov Battalion together with several smaller partisan detachments were organized into the so-called third group of battalions. The provisional HQ of the reorganized MNOV was stationed in the village of Fustani in the Pella district. 
Because the massive concentration of MNOV troops in the Moglena district was jeopardizing the Axis communication to Thessaloniki, Bulgarian and German forces launched an incursion against the MNOV in Moglena and at Mount Kozov. The fighting lasted from 26 December till 18 January. All Axis attacks were repelled, and Mount Kozov remained a free territory held by the MNOV. After the fight for Mount Kozov, the headquarters of the MNOV decided to launch a three-phase offensive in central and eastern Vardar Macedonia against the fascist occupation forces, known as the February March. In accordance with the February March plan, on 31 January 1944 the 1st Macedonian Kosovo Assault Brigade started marching towards the Velez and Poric regions, but immediately after crossing the border, the brigade was attacked by two Bulgarian divisions. After constant fighting in cold weather, on 14 February the brigade returned to Greek Macedonia. Although it did not fulfill its mission because of the energetic counter-attacks of the Bulgarians, the 1st Brigade engaged two divisions of the Bulgarian 5th Army in that region. This opened a gap for the 3rd Group of Brigades together with CPM and the HQ of MNOV to pass through eastern Macedonia. The 2nd Macedonian Assault Brigade conducted incursions from 31 January till mid-1944 from Kozov to Gevgelia and demir Kapia regions, disrupting the Bulgarian authority in the villages and closing Bulgarian schools. On 31 January the 3rd Group of Brigades together with the HQ of the MNOV and the CC of the CPM started marching from the village of Zaborsko to eastern Vardar Macedonia. 23 days later, after 400 kilometers of travel through five mountain ranges in terrible weather and constant engagements with Bulgarian army units, the third group of battalions was in partisan-held territory near Kamanovo. There it made contacts with the forces in Pisinja district and the Bulgarian resistance. The Risto Botev Battalion, which was until then under the command of the MNOV of Macedonia, was transferred to the Bulgarian Resistance Command. The 3rd Battalion Group merged with the two existing Macedonian battalions in Kamanovo region and formed the famous 3rd Macedonian Assault Brigade in the Kamanovo village of Zelyan on 26 February 1944. After its formation, the 3rd Macedonian Assault Brigade became the biggest partisan formation in Macedonia and southern Serbia. In South Morava, Serbian Chetniks held the terrain, supported by the Germans. The Chetniks prevented the Communists from organizing in that area. After a meeting in Prohor Pisingski Monastery it was decided the command of the South Moravian and Kosovo partisan detachments would be given to the HQ of MNOV of Macedonia, as it was the most organized and most experienced. The first objective of the HQ of MNOV after the expansion of its command region was the destruction of the Chetnik movement in Macedonia and Pisinja district, starting with the Chetnik stationed in Vardar Macedonia. Topic. Destruction of the Vardar Chetnik Corps As of 1941, attempts were made to create a Serbian loyalist movement in Vardar Macedonia. A few bands were formed in Velez, Prilip and Strumica, mainly by war veterans and by former Chetnik leaders. These groups were few in numbers, decentralized, and some were formed under their own initiative. By mid-1942 all of them were destroyed by units of the Bulgarian army. At the beginning of 1943, in order to organize a strong Chetnik force in Vardar Macedonia, and in order to destroy the group influenced by Kosta Pekanak, Draza Mihailovic sent in Lt. Milivoye Turbic. He quickly organized local committees in Skopje, Velez, Kasivo and Gostovar and started recruiting volunteers among the Serbs of Macedonia. Soon the Vardar Chetnik Corps VCC was formed headed by Stoyan Kerstik, a native of Prilip, which had about 8,000 fighters in Vardar Macedonia. After the formation of the 1st Battalions of the Macedonian National Liberation Army, the VCC directed all of its efforts to destroying the liberation movement of the Macedonian people. 
The Porek Chetnik Brigade terrorized the villages that supported the partisans and started conducting forced mobilization. This stimulated anger against the Chetniks and pushed more volunteers into the ranks of the partisan army. In December 1943 the High Command gave Ristian Todorovsky Karpos the task of destroying the Chetniks in the Skopska Crna Gora region in Skopje and Kozyak in Kamanovo. With detachments from Kamanovo and Skopje, he attacked the Chetniks in three battles, the most important of which occurred near the village of Dragomance at the end of 1943. This battle brought to an end the Chetnik presence in the Kamanovo region. By end of January the Chetniks in Kasivo and Skopska Crna Gora were disarmed by the MNOV. The Porek Chetnik Brigade also capitulated, and those fighters entered the ranks of the Porek Partisan Battalion. After being defeated in Dragomance and Porek, the remaining Chetniks from various scattered brigades merged and concentrated in the Kozyak area on the border with Serbia, where they managed to occupy all of the villages. The Serbian Chetniks holding the mountain villages in Kozjak presented a real obstacle for the partisans, depriving them of the strategic mountain areas in their struggle against the Bulgarian army. Also, the Vardar Chetnik Corps started a massive attack on the partisans, which made the situation even worse. At the end of January 1944, the high command of the MNOV decided to launch an offensive, with the intention of destroying the VCC. On 29 February 1944 the partisans of the 3rd Macedonian Assault Brigade attacked the Chetnik flanks from north, west and south, while the Risto Botev detachment hit the Chetniks from the east. In the battle for the village of Sajak, the Vardar Chetnik Corps was totally destroyed, suffering 53 casualties 46 shot by partisans and 7 drowned in the river Pisinja while attempting to flee. 97 Chetniks, including five officers, were captured in the action. On 3 March 1944 in the village of Novo Silo, partisan fighters destroyed the remaining force, capturing 30 Chetniks and more than 100 rifles and ammunition. The Serbian Chetniks suffered 12 dead, including Stoyan Kerstik, their commander. After these decisive battles Draza Mihailovic's Chetnik organization ceased to exist as a powerful force in Macedonia. Various local Chetnik bands, decentralized and acting on their own accord, such as the Porik Chetniks, continued to operate in certain parts of Macedonia but they were generally scattered and disorganized. Topic. Actions in northern Vardar Macedonia and southeastern Serbia The February–March campaign of 1944 had a great political and moral impact. The whole Bulgarian 5th Army, all of the Bulgarian police, as well as the army regiments stationed in K. Justandil and Gorna Zumaja were engaged in the battles. After the February march, the Bulgarian government was forced to change its strategy. Organization of the fighting would no longer be the responsibility of the police but of the army, and all organizations would be obliged to help the army. After the operations which ended with the destruction of the Chetniks in Macedonia, the HQ of the MNOV, now acting as supreme commander of the partisan units in Vardar Macedonia, Kosovo and South Morava, decided to engage in three new attacks on the Bulgarian police and administration. On 26 April 1944 the 3rd Macedonian Assault Brigade together with the Kosovo Detachment successfully attacked the city of Ristovac, where 130 Bulgarian soldiers were killed and 20 captured by the Macedonian partisans. On 3 April 1944 the 3rd Macedonian Assault Brigade attacked the mining town of Zoltovo, where about 100 miners entered the ranks of the brigade. Topic. Spring Offensive Because of increased partisan activity, the main supply lines for the German Army Group E, stationed in Greece and Albania were constantly ambushed and jeopardized. 
In order to obtain control over the supply lines and the wider areas around them, the Bulgarian and German armies organized an offensive in Macedonia and southeast Serbia, as part of the 7th Anti-Partisan Offensive, also known as the Raid on Dravar. In this offensive the occupation authorities mobilized the Bulgarian 5th Army, additional Bulgarian troops from Bulgaria, Chetnik forces from Vlasitints and Leskovic, Greek reactionary POW units, Albanian Bali Kombatar from Western Macedonia and the whole German garrison from Kilkis, making a total of 60,000 military and administrative personnel in the area. At the same time, the HQ of the MNOV was making plans to liberate Western Macedonia and sent the first 1st Macedonian Kosovo Assault Brigade there. Pushing towards Dabarka, the 1st Macedonian Kosovo Assault Brigade had clashes with the Bulgarians and Germans in Zavoy and Velmej. The Germans obtained reinforcements and on 8 May 1944 they counter-attacked. The fighting ended on 20 May 1944 with the Germans being pushed out of the region. After recapturing the Debarka area, more reinforcements became available, so the brigade was split in two brigades, the 1st Macedonian and 1st Kosovo Assault Brigades. Also, two smaller detachments were formed and charged with the objective of spreading the insurrection in Azot and Porik. In order to prevent the Germans and Bulgarians from taking total control of the action, the MNOV decided to make surprise attacks on enemy positions and to try to exhaust the enemy any way they could. The 2nd Macedonian Assault Brigade was sent to conduct several actions in Povardari Central Macedonia and Pelagonia near Prilip and Bitola. From 25 April until the 22 of June 1944, the 2nd Macedonian Assault Brigade attacked enemy forces, positions and garrisons at Gradeshnica, Tikves, Kanopashti, Demir Kapia, Stramashevo, Kavadarchi and Nagoshino. The longest battles were conducted in eastern Macedonia and Pisinja district, where the main German supply lines Vardar and, Morava and those of the Bulgarians Skopje -Sophia were jeopardized. The main forces of the occupying armies were concentrated in that area. This position not only controlled the main communication lines, but positioned them to attack the Macedonian, South Serbian, and Bulgarian resistance movements which were stationed in northeastern Macedonia. In order to confuse the enemy, the MNOV ordered a surprise attack by the 3rd Macedonian Assault Brigade on the city of Kradovo. After a half-day battle, Kradovo fell into the hands of the partisans. The attack and liberation of Kradovo had a great political and military impact in a time when the Germans and Bulgarians were starting a massive offensive, but it did not stop the Nazis. The 3rd Macedonian Assault Brigade was forced to leave Kradovo three days later, and was involved in many clashes with the Axis armies making while their way 10 km north of Kilkis in Greece. There they rested, reorganized, and started a counter-offensive against the Bulgarians and Germans, battling from Kilkis through eastern Macedonia, passing into Serbia all the way to Crna Trava, where together with the 6th South Moravian Brigade they engaged the enemy in the final battles of this offensive. In the two months of fighting during the spring offensive the Axis forces suffered many casualties. In western Macedonia there were 672 killed and 76 captured Axis soldiers, in central Macedonia Povardari, there were 180 killed and 88 captured, in eastern Macedonia and southeastern Serbia there were over 1,060 killed and 498 captured. A large amount of weapons and ammunition was seized. The newly conscripted men from the freed territories as well as the captured firearms were used to form new brigades and divisions. On 23 July 1944 in Plakovica, the 4th Macedonian Assault Brigade was formed, and was sent to eastern Macedonia in order to make contact with the resistance movement in western Bulgaria. In the beginning of August in Poric the 5th Macedonian Assault Brigade was formed. One week after its formation it managed to destroy the remains of the Poric Chetniks. In western Macedonia the 6th Macedonian Assault Brigade was formed and was immediately given the assignment of clearing the armed forces of the Bali Kombatar from western Macedonia. By the end of August four new brigades were formed out of newly recruited volunteers, the 7th, 8th, 9th and 10th Assault Brigades. 
In the village of Sheshkovo the 1st Macedonian Division was formed out of these new brigades. ASNOM On 2 August 1944, on the 41st anniversary of the Alinden Uprising, the first session of the newly created Anti-Fascist Assembly of the National Liberation of Macedonia was held at the St. Prohor Pisingski Monastery. In spite of Tito's hopes to the contrary, the presiding committee of ASNOM was dominated by elements that were not known for their pro-Yugoslav sentiments. To the displeasure of those preferring joining the Yugoslav Socialist Federation, Matodia Andonov Cento was elected president and Panko Brashnarov former member of IMRO vice president. The assembly tried to secure as much independence as possible for Yugoslav Macedonia and gave priority to the unification of the three parts of Macedonia. Several sources state that Cento had made plans for creating an independent Macedonia which would be backed by the USAA Manifesto was written outlining the future plans of ASNOM for an independent Macedonian state and declaring the Macedonian language as the official language of Macedonia. ASNOM was the governing body of Macedonia from its formation until the end of World War II. Topic. Maximalists and Minimalists The manifesto of ASNOM eventually became a compromise between the Maximalists and the Minimalists. The unification of the Macedonian people was discussed and propagandized but the decision was ultimately reached that Vardar Macedonia would become a part of the new communist Yugoslavia. The proponents of the «maximalist» line were in favour of the creation of an independent united Macedonian state which would have ties with Yugoslavia, but not necessarily inclusion in a Yugoslav federation. Proponents of this option included Matodia Andonov Cento, as well as prominent figures of the former IMRO united, such as Pavel Shatev, Panko Brashnarov, and others. They saw joining Yugoslavia as a form of Serbian dominance over Macedonia, and preferred membership in a Balkan federation or else complete independence. Proponents of the minimalist line were also for the creation of a Macedonian state, but within the Yugoslavian federation. These differences were visible in the ASNOM discussions, but they especially came into the open after the final liberation of Macedonia. It must be added that both maximalist and minimalist lines within the national liberation movement in Vardar Macedonia supported the existence of a separate Macedonian identity and were in favor of the creation of a separate state in which the Macedonian people would have their homeland. The greatest difference between the two lines was whether Macedonia should join Yugoslavia, or exist as an independent country. Topic. Failed attempt to create Macedonian puppet state By August 1944, the Soviet army was approaching the Balkans. In a last-minute attempt to create a buffer state against the incoming Red Army, on 29 August, the Germans attempted to establish an independent Macedonian puppet state, led by Ivan Mihailov. Unlike the leftist resistance, the right-wing followers of IMRO were pro-Bulgarian orientated, and did not support the existence of a future Yugoslavia. The Bulgarian interior minister was put in charge to contact Mihailov, who at the time was an advisor to Croatia's Nazi leader Ante Pavelic. The state was to receive no military troops or weapons backing from Germany, because the Germans were running short on troops and weapons. Telegrams from the time indicate that an orderly Bulgarian-German troop withdrawal would precede the formation of such a puppet state. Bulgaria ordered its troops to withdraw from Macedonia on 2 September. In the evening on 3 September, Ivan Mihailov was flown in first from Zagreb to Sofia, to see what can be saved. Quote dot. 
Two telegrams from the 5th of September at 1 to 7 and the 6th of September at 2:20 relay Hitler's reorder for the establishment of such a state. Mihailov was transported from Sofia to Skopje in the evening of the 5th of September. Based on German telegrams from the time, Ivan Mihailov was offered the establishment of such a state, but by 1800 6 PM on 6 September, he declined for inability to gather support. The failure led to ordering German withdrawal from Greece on 6 September and appointing senior field commandant for Greece Heinz Schierlin as the new senior field commandant for Macedonia. Germany closed its consulate in Skopje and evacuated its staff together with Ivan Mihailov and his wife out of Macedonia. However on 8 September, right-wing IMRO nationalists declared independence. The self-proclaimed state was left virtually defenseless, following the withdrawal of German troops. The Germans did not support it as their forces withdrew from the region. In the chaos, they just tried to use the new formed Macedonian committees as local police stations. Their members were former activists of Bulgarian action committees. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Bulgaria switching sides. In September 1944 the Soviet Union declared war on Bulgaria and occupied part of the country. A coup d'état on 9 September led to Bulgaria joining the Soviets. A day earlier Bulgaria had declared war on Nazi Germany. This turn of events put Bulgarian divisions stationed in Macedonia in a difficult situation. German troops had closed round them, while their command was being nonplussed by the high treason of some staff officers, who had deserted to the German side. The withdrawing Bulgarian troops in Macedonia fought their way back to the old borders of Bulgaria. Josip Broz formed relations with the new pro-communist authorities in Bulgaria. After the occupation of Bulgaria by the Soviet army negotiations between Tito and the Bulgarian communist leaders were organized in September to October 1944, resulting in a military alliance between the Yugoslav forces and Bulgaria. That was followed by demobilization of the Macedonian recruits, who formed as much as 40% to 60% of the soldiers in some Bulgarian battalions. As a result, the Gatsi Delchev Brigade was set up and equipped in Sofia by the Bulgarian government providing the basis for the deployment of considerable Yugoslav troops in Vardar Macedonia. <laughs> <laughs> Final operations for the liberation of Macedonia Bulgarian army Under the leadership of the new Bulgarian pro-Soviet government, four Bulgarian armies, 455,000 strong in total, were mobilized and reorganized. By the end of September, the Red Army 3rd Ukrainian Front troops were concentrated at the Bulgarian-Yugoslav border. In the early October 1944 three Bulgarian armies, consisting of around 340,000 men, together with the Red Army re-entered occupied Yugoslavia and moved from Sofia to Nice, Skopje and Pristina to blocking the German forces withdrawing from Greece. In Macedonia the Bulgarians operated in conjunction with the fighters of the MNLA, but this cooperation did not proceed without difficulties. From 8 October to 19 November, the Stratson Kamanovo operation was held and Kratovo, Kriva Polanka, Kamanovo and Skopje were taken. At the same time the Brigalnitsa Strumica operation was led, and the Wehrmacht was driven from the villages of Delchevo, Kokani, Stip, Strumica and Velez. In parallel, the Kosovo operation was also taking a place, aiming to expel the German forces from Kosovo. Southern and eastern Serbia, Kosovo and Vardar Macedonia were liberated by the end of November. The third Ukrainian front in collaboration with the People's Liberation Army of Yugoslavia and Bulgarian People's Army carried out the Belgrade offensive. 
The 130,000 strong Bulgarian 1st Army continued to Hungary, driving off the Germans, while the rest moved back to Bulgaria. On a series of maps from Army Group E, showing its withdrawal through Macedonia and southern Serbia, as well as in the memoirs of its Chief of Staff, there is almost no indication of Yugoslav partisan units, but only Bulgarian divisions. Despite these facts, the contribution of Bulgarian troops is still much debated in the Republic of Macedonia for political reasons. Topic. Macedonian partisans In October 1944, more new brigades were formed in Velez, Skopje, and Kamanovo regions. The new 12th, 16th, and 18th assault brigades were formed in eastern Macedonia, the 13th, 14th, 19th, 20th, and 21st assault brigades, and in western Macedonia, the 15th Macedonian Assault Brigade. By the end of October 1944 in Vardar Macedonia there were 21 Macedonian, 1 Kosovar, 1 Albanian, and the 1st Aegean Macedonian Brigade composed of 1500 armed former Slavic Macedonian National Liberation Front SNOF members that crossed the border into Vardar Macedonia after ELAS ordered the dissolution of their unit. The 1st Macedonian Cavalry Brigade and the 1st Macedonian Automobile Brigade were formed using captured equipment, arms, vehicles, and horses. From August until the beginning of November three engineering brigades were formed which started repairing the roads. The new brigades were grouped in six new divisions, which made the total force of the People's Liberation Army of Macedonia III Corps composed of seven divisions, consisting of some 66,000 Macedonian partisans. By mid-November 1944 the Germans were completely dislodged from Macedonia, and organs of «People's Authority» were established. The German brigade Angermiler was positioned at the Kakanic Gorge. Skopje was defended by elements of the 22nd Infantry Division and parts of the 11th Luftwaffe Division which was mainly involved in the fighting in eastern Macedonia, and units from other divisions. Skopje was liberated on 13 November by the 42nd and 50th Macedonian Divisions. After the liberation of Skopje, the HQ of the MNOV sent one artillery and twelve assault brigades to western Macedonia, where they enjoyed a decisive victory over the armed forces of the Bali Kombatar. After fierce fighting, Kasivo was liberated on 16 November, Gostovar on 18 November and Titovo on 19 November. During these the MNOV killed or captured 13,000 armed Bali Kombatar troops about 90% of their forces. On 19 November 1944, with the liberation of Titovo and Gostovar, the Vardar region of Macedonia was completely liberated. Because of constant clashes with the MNOV the retreat of German Army Group E was blocked for 14 days, and during the final operations for the liberation of Macedonia the German troops had considerable loss of manpower and material, the 22nd Grenadier and 11th Luftwaffe Division suffered 10% casualties and a 15% loss of equipment. Topic. Aftermath. Chronological composition by the number of the members of MNLA was as follows. The total number of casualties in Macedonia from World War II was approximately 24,000, as follows, 7,000 Jews, 6,000 Serbians, 6,000 ethnic Macedonians, 4,000 Albanians and 1,000 Bulgarians. This includes around 3,000 collaborationists, counter-revolutionaries and civilian victims, 7,000 Jews exterminated in concentration camps, and 14,000 resistance fighters and soldiers, of which 5,000 were Macedonians. Despite Bulgaria's significant involvement on the side of the Allies at the end of the war, the country was not cast as a co-fighting country at the Paris Peace Conference, 1946 and was ordered to pay Yugoslavia war reparations for the occupation of Macedonia and southern Serbia, which Yugoslavia unilaterally abandoned in 1947. Macedonia gained the respect of its allies through its contribution to the victory over fascism. 
It gained recognition of the newly established Macedonian Republic by the Allies, even though within the framework of the Yugoslavian Federation. And through the National Liberation War of Macedonia, for the first time in modern history, the Macedonian people managed to obtain their statehood, nation and language. These events marked the defeat of the Bulgarian nationalism and the victory of the Macedonism in the area. Topic. Controversy Topic. Communist repressions After the liberation the Presidium of the Anti-Fascist Assembly for the People's Liberation of Macedonia ASNOM, which was the governing body of Macedonia, made several statements and actions that were contradictory to the decisions of the Anti-Fascist Council of the People's Liberation of Yugoslavia AVNOJ, the Yugoslav Executive Authority. Tito's general headquarters sent orders asking the forces of the MNOV to participate in the fighting in the Sirmian Front for the final liberation of Yugoslavia. President Matodia Andonov Cento and his associates debated whether to send the troops to SREM and help liberate Yugoslavia or to advance the troops under his command toward Greek Macedonia in order to unify the Macedonian people into one country. Officers loyal to Andonov Cento mutinied in the garrison stationed in Skopje Fortress, but the mutiny was suppressed by armed intervention. A dozen officers were shot on the spot, with others sentenced to life imprisonment. Andonov Cento and his close associates were trying to minimize the ties with Yugoslavia as far as possible and promoted the unification of the Macedonian people into one state, which was contrary to the decisions of AVNOJ. As a result Andonov Cento was replaced by Lazar Koloshevsky, who started fully implementing the pro-Yugoslav line. The new leadership of the People's Republic of Macedonia headed by Lazar Koloshevsky confirmed the decisions of AVNOJ, and Macedonia joined Yugoslavia. Bosnia and Herzegovina, Croatia, Macedonia, Montenegro, Serbia, and Slovenia eventually all became part of the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. The Macedonian national feelings were already ripe at that time as compared to 1941. Subsequently, to wipe out the remaining Bulgarophile sentiments, the new communist authorities persecuted the right-wing nationalists with the charges of Great Bulgarian Chauvinism. The next task was also to break up all the organizations that opposed the idea of Yugoslavia. So even older left-wing politicians, who were at some degree pro-Bulgarian oriented, were purged from their positions, then isolated, arrested and imprisoned on fabricated charges, as foreign agents, demanding greater independence, forming of conspirative political groups and the like. Besides, many people went throughout the labor camp of Goli Otok in the middle 1940s. The number of the victims is estimated to 50,000, including those killed, imprisoned, deported, sent to forced labor, tortured, etc. Topic. Manipulation of historical events By their invasion in 1941, the Bulgarians were greeted by the locals as liberators, because pro-Bulgarian sentiments still prevailed. At the same time sizable part of the local administration, the soldiers recruited in the Bulgarian army and the police officers stationed in Vardar Macedonia were native from the area. However, after the war, the Yugoslav communist historiography did a lot to equate the term Bulgarians with fascistic occupiers. On the other hand, the glory cation of the Yugoslav partisan movement became one of the main components of the post-war communist political propaganda. Despite that, before the autumn of 1944, the Macedonian partisans were not significant military force. Their activity did not differ from the typically Balkan Hajduk traditions as ambushes and lack of military planning. They were ill-equipped and did not have good training. The partisans received more weapons after the coup d'état of September 9, 1944 when Bulgarian military equipment fell into their hands. 
At the same time, it became clear in the autumn of 1944, that the Bulgarian army was the real force behind the driving the Germans out of eastern Serbia and Macedonia. However the of CIAL Yugoslav and later Macedonian historiography, has played down its role by political grounds. For example, according to Macedonian sources Bulgarians did not participate in the operations for the capture of Skopje, even as observers. Nevertheless Skopje was seized not without the decisive role of the Bulgarian troops. Topic. See also List of World War II monuments and memorials in the Republic of Macedonia Bulgarian resistance movement during World War II Anti-partisan operations in World War II Seven anti-partisan offensives Macedonian question Military history of Albania during World War II Military history of Bulgaria during World War II Military history of Germany during World War II Military history of Italy during World War II Military history of the Republic of Macedonia Timeline of World War II Titoism <laughs>